Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity to look into the precious Word of God. Father, we thank you that this Bible is God-breathed, and that you stand behind every word of it. And Father, in fact, we thank you that you and your Word are one, according to, first, or according to John chapter 1, verse 1. So Father, we present ourselves tonight. Father, give us words to speak. And give us ears to hear that we might be obedient to the written word of God. And we thank you that you will lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about healing. If you need healing in your body, and if you are seeking it from God, then there are some things that you need to know in order to receive healing and to be sure that you will be healed you should know these things before you pray for healing we're talking about instructions instructions to those needing healing you know today more than ever things that we buy need assembled it used to be you bought things that they were assembled but now you buy pieces and have to assemble them. And we've all had the experience of not understanding the directions or losing the directions or some of the pieces weren't there or the pieces didn't fit or we didn't understand the directions or we didn't follow the directions. But God has instructions to those that need healing. So in order to achieve the objective, you have to know what you're doing. The objective is not to seek healing. The objective is not just to pray for healing. The objective is to receive healing. Putting it back in the context of modern things, you know, the idea is not just to buy something or just to bring it home. The idea is to assemble it so you can use it. So in order to achieve the objective, which is healing, you have to know what you're doing. If you think that you already know what you're doing and are not healed, then this may well help you. Seeking healing without directions is like trying to assemble something without directions. It may work, but it probably won't. It may have worked for someone, but it probably won't work for you. And following the instructions will bring the desired results and avoid a lot of headaches. So, we must look to the Word of God and only the Word of God for instructions. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, God said, Trust in the Lord. That's where it begins. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord only comes from hearing the Word of God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. If you aren't trusting in the Bible, you have no basis in which to trust God. Because the Bible reveals what God will do and what you must do. So it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not or trust not in your own understanding, your own experience. Now, if you are trusting God with all your heart, that means there's no room to trust anything else. Then it says, in all thy ways... Well, seeking healing is a way. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And then he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. That's saying the same thing as don't trust in your own understanding. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Sickness and evil are connected and what God thinks is evil is often not thought of evil by men. Verse 8, it will be healing to your flesh. 
That's what we're after. And refreshment to your bones. In all your ways acknowledge him. Verse 6. The Hebrew word translated acknowledge literally means to know and then acknowledge. You cannot acknowledge something you don't know. You may acknowledge something you think, but there's a vast difference between thinking and knowing. So we have to know God, and then we acknowledge who He is. We acknowledge that He is who He says He is, and He will do what He says He will do. And the only way to know Him and to know what He will do is to become an ardent, eager, devout searcher and then lover of the Word of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 says, talking about the coming of the Antichrist, says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. And why are they perishing? Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. The word saved is also translated healed. So your healing is from God, but it comes to you through the Word of God. Hebrews 11.6, we're talking about the instructions. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. You know, faithless prayer does not please God. Rubbing a bunch of beads together does not please God. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is what he says he is in the Bible and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can only seek him in the word. When you have faith, it pleases God because it's a spiritual law that God only rewards faith. So you have to eagerly, diligently fervently go after the truth that is found only in the Word of God. And I'm not talking about second or third hand truth that you heard from someone else. That's a good place to start, but that will generally not get the job done or keep the job done. I'm talking about you loving the Word of God yourself and going after it. You know, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It is not the truth that someone else knows that will make you free. It is not you hearing the truth from someone else that will make you free. It's you knowing the truth that will make you free. And if you know the truth, you're not moved by a lie. And if you're moved by a lie, it's because you don't know the truth. Know it. Absolutely. So I'm talking about you loving the Word of God yourself and going after it. Because Proverbs 4.20 says, It, God's Word, is life to those who find it, and medicine to all their flesh. You will never find it until you search for it with all your heart. The only accurate way to know all about God is through knowing the Bible. Many people think they know God, but the God that they know is often a mixture of what other men think and what the Bible has said. Only the pure, unadulterated Word of God is truth. And neither God nor His Word is a mixture of truth and error, or a mixture of light and dark. God and His Word are pure and holy love and truth and full of mercy and compassion. And He does not change with the whims of men and the fancies of the day. One of the most outrageous examples of what men call God is when God supernaturally led the children of Israel out of Egypt then he called Moses to come up on the mountain where he received the Ten Commandments. 
And because he was gone for longer than they expected, those that were left on the flat ground made a golden calf and called it Jehovah. They didn't call it a golden calf. They didn't call it something else. They called it God Almighty. Let's read it. Exodus 32, 3. Then all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Aaron was the high priest who took from their hands, of course he wasn't the high priest yet, who took from their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool and made of it a molten calf. Then they said, These are the gods of Israel which brought, brought thee up out of, the hand, out of the land of Egypt. And seeing this, Aaron built an altar before the calf, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast unto the Lord. And in the King James Bible, that's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which is the way they often translated the Hebrew word Jehovah. And Jehovah is the proper name of God. How do we know it's the proper name of God? Because God said so. It's the name that God gave to himself. And it means the self-existent one. And it's self-evidence that that calf was not self-existent. God is not a golden calf or any other concoction of man or man's religion. But according to his word, he's Jehovah your deliverer. He's Jehovah your savior. He's Jehovah your healer. He's Jehovah your victory. He's Jehovah your righteousness. He's Jehovah who supplies all of your needs. He's Jehovah, your shepherd, who leads and feeds and guides and provides and protects you. He's Jehovah who gives you the standing as his children. He is Jehovah who gives life and health to all your flesh. He's Jehovah who designed and created you. And he's Jehovah who makes covenant arrangements with God, or excuse me, with men. And he fully abides by them and he keeps and helps men to keep and abide by the laws of the covenant. So I encourage you to read his instructions on how to live in health <coughs> and harmony with him and be healed. We don't want to just give it a try. You see, if you start out before you've read the instructions, then you're just trying. We don't want to just give it a try like some experimental medicine or natural remedy. Although some natural remedies may help, God does not heal with natural remedies. God's healing is supernatural. And it's based on supernatural laws. So many people seek to receive something from God without knowing the laws. I was shocked this week to find out that in the state of California, there's a speed limit of, I believe he said, 55 miles an hour for trucks. I didn't know that. Well, if you don't know that, you could be getting an awful big fine in the state of California. Healing is based on spiritual laws, more than one law. Just like in the natural, there's many natural laws. Healing is based on spiritual laws. What are some of the spiritual laws that you need to know and abide by if you want to receive from God? Well, first of all, there's the supernatural law of hearing. There's the supernatural law of speaking. 
There's the supernatural law of faith. There's the supernatural law that the carnal mind is not receptive to the things of God. There's a supernatural law of renewing the carnal mind. There's a supernatural law of double-mindedness. There is a supernatural law of believing or doing. For the Greek word believing does not refer to mentally accepting something. It refers to physically acting upon it. There's a supernatural law of forgiving others of all wrong done to you. There's a supernatural law of walking in love. And there's a supernatural law of sowing and reaping. Now you say, well, I don't understand how those laws apply to healing. That's why you need to read the Bible and find out what hearing and speaking have to do with healing. So to be assured of receiving healing, you must have an unwavering faith in the Word of God for the healing of your body. I'm convinced that more people try to have faith then act on the faith that is necessary they get the cart before the horse and it doesn't pull well to be assured of receiving healing you must appropriate it through a fully persuaded faith receiving faith will not and cannot go beyond your personal knowledge of the Bible. God wants all men saved and healed. And if you don't believe that, then you do not believe the Bible. You've believed men. There are men out there who preach the horrible lie that God created some to go to hell. That would be a horrible thing, and God does not do horrible things because tender kindness and loving mercies are over all his works. <coughs> or loving kindness and tender mercies are over all his works. God desires all men to be saved. How do I know that? The Bible says so. And he desires all men to be healed. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning the promise or concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to usward not willing usward meaning the human population not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance the word perish here refers to dying spiritually and going to hell the Lord wants no one to perish, but they do perish. Therefore, if you believe that God's will is always done, you need to read the Bible. The Lord wants no one to perish, but they do perish. But it's not God's will that they perish. And they perish because they live outside of God's will and they die outside of God's will. The same spiritual laws apply to all men, saved or unsaved. Just like gravity, doesn't matter if you're saved or unsaved, it applies to you. Isaiah 5.13 Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Sickness is a prime captivity. And their honorable men are famished and their multitudes dried up with thirst. You see that law applies to everyone. Without knowledge, you cannot receive from God. Because knowledge and faith go together. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they rejected knowledge. If you reject the Word of God, you are living and creating for yourself a great peril. My people 
God's people are destroyed for lack of... It doesn't mean you won't go to heaven, but you will not have God's best here on this earth, and God's healing is far better than Satan's sickness. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. Do not reject the Word of God because you didn't know how to work it. Think how many things you've bought and you took home and you tried to assemble them without reading the instructions and you got so frustrated you threw it away. Don't throw away the Word of God. Read the instructions. God created man in his own image. God put a living spirit in every man. God put a part of himself in every man. He is the father of of all their spirits. It is not God's will that any man should perish, which means die spiritually and go to hell, but they do die and they do go to hell. But God created men to live and not die, but they perish because they do not follow and obey God's spiritual laws of life. Instead of following the spiritual laws of life, they follow the spiritual laws of death, such as the wages of sin is death. That is, the wages of unforgiven sin is spiritual death, not talking about physical death there. And just as it's not God's will that any human being perish, it is not God's will that any man should be sick. God's plan for man is spiritual life, and physical health and a peaceful mind. It's God's desire that all men, everywhere, anywhere, anytime, be made whole. The prophet Isaiah speaking for God said in Isaiah 54, 15, Behold, they, which is anything evil, shall surely gather together but not by me. Quit blaming God for what the devil does. Quit trying to explain bad by saying, well, it must be God's will. No, bad is never God's will. Everything that God did and does and will ever do is good. Behold, they, anything evil, shall surely gather together but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Now that's God's plan. Is God's plan that your adversary, and remember you do have an adversary who goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It's God's plan that your adversary should never have a victory in your life. And for every attack of the enemy, God has made a way of escape. But you have to know the way, and then you have to make your escape. Satan's attacks will come. Sin's attacks will come. And according to Acts 10.38, sickness and disease fall into the category of attacks from Satan. They will come but not from God. Anybody who says God sent this sickness on me to teach me something is not understanding the instructions. They will come not from God, but from your adversary, the devil, who's trying to destroy you. If you obey God and follow his spiritual laws of life, Satan will not succeed in his attacks against you. They will come, but they will fail. Faith to receive anything from God only comes after knowing the revealed will of God, which is found in the Bible. So healing only comes after knowing the revealed will of God, which is found in the Bible. Before beginning to exercise faith for healing, and I say beginning because healing is generally a process. I know that when Jesus walked the earth, it was often instant, but 
We are not Jesus. We do not have the Holy Spirit without measure. We have the Holy Spirit by measure. And we're not sinless. And we have carnal parts of our mind that are carnal. And so for us, healing is almost always gradual. Before beginning to exercise faith for healing, you absolutely must know and accept and then act upon what the scriptures plainly teach about God's provision in the area of healing. And I say plainly teach. You cannot read the Bible and wonder, does God heal today? You cannot read the Bible without and still doubt that God wants to heal you today. Before beginning to exercise faith for healing, you absolutely must know and accept and then act upon what the scriptures plainly teach about God's provision in the area of healing. Nothing more, but nothing less. Nothing more and nothing less than you and the Word of God and God. The Bible teaches that God wants to make every man whole, spirit, soul, and body. Now, I'm not suggesting that if you are in a position that you are not receiving healing, I'm not suggesting you don't go to a doctor. I'm suggesting you go to the doctor and then go to the Word of God and find out what to do next and how to stop this. The Bible clearly teaches that God wants to make every man whole, spirit, soul, and body. And I might say he wants the body whole the way he created it. Not the way some doctor butchered it. And I will just say this, any doctor that performs these sex chain surgery is little better than a Nazi doctor in a concentration camp. Of course, the most important event in your life is being spiritually born again. The Bible teaches us that Jesus died for the sins of the whole world so that every man can be born again. It also says Jesus died for the physical healing of every man. And just as the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish and go to hell, it also says that Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan, which include sickness and disease. The truth is, it is God's will to make you a new creation and renew your mind and heal your body. Total salvation. Top to bottom. Inside and out. Isaiah prophesied of both spiritual and physical redemption in Isaiah chapter 53. Now most Christians know Jesus died for our sins, that he shed his sinless blood in the place of our sinful blood, but too many do not know the correct translation of Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, which I will read to you from the Jewish Publication Society Bible. And I assure you that it is the correct translation because there are other translations that say the same thing. And I assure you it is the correct translation. And I encourage you to study out for yourself. You have to do your own homework. Surely Isaiah 53, 4 from the Jewish Publication Society Bible Surely our diseases he did bear. Surely. Means no doubt about it. No doubt. Our diseases he did bear. Not talking spiritually here. Here he's talking about your body. Surely our diseases he did bear. Spiritual death is not a disease. It's a, Surely our diseases he did bear. And our pains he carried, whereas we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. In other words, they didn't even see it. They didn't know it. But the truth is he was wounded because of our transgressions. He was crushed 
because of our iniquities. The chastisement of our welfare was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. As far as God's concerned, you were healed. You need to find out and have an unwavering faith to receive it. It is only by knowing and believing that God promises you healing, the healing that you're seeking, that all doubt can be washed away by the Word of God and replaced with unmovable faith and trust that it is not only God's will to heal you, but that He will give you the faith to receive whatever you need through His Word of God. The Bible is full of the revelation of what God is eager to do for us. I read all those things that He is. He's our healer, our deliverer, our provider, our shepherd. The Bible is full of the revelation of what God is eager to do for us. Until we know what God's will is, there is nothing on which to base our faith. We may have hope, but hope is not faith. Hope, as one man said, is a good waiter, but not a good receiver. Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So hope does not receive, faith receives. Hope in your heart will not give you the evidence that it's yours, but faith will. And then Hebrews 11, verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. The elders obtained all the elders in the Bible. And then he lists a bunch of them there in Hebrews 11. We call it the Hall of Fame. By it the elders obtained a good report. Now you think about it. We talk about men like... Moses and Enoch and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Gideon, David, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Elisha, Elijah. Every one of them received a good report by faith. Why would you dare to think you'll receive a good report without faith? If those great men and, God, men and women of God received because of faith... Do you think that God's going to make another way for you? No, He has made a way, and it's called faith. And if you will diligently seek Him, you will receive the faith to receive all the things that He wants to give you. God is a rewarder. There's a reward for walking by faith. And there's a deficit for not walking by faith in every area of our life, including healing. Everyone who ever received a good report received it because they had faith in God's Word, and they acted upon that Word in faith, and they received the promise of God. So, that's part one of the instructions. You know, today... You, you buy instruction, you get buy something, and there'll be instructions in English, and Spanish, and French. Well, we're going to continue next week in English, the rest of this message. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your instructions. We thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that people will listen to this message over and over and over again until they are driven into the Word of God. For, Father, we know that we live in perilous times, and we are not just talking about healing. We're talking about walking in victory. Because you said this is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. That means everything in the world and every attack of the enemy. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. It's not somebody else's faith, but it's your faith. So, Father, we are so thankful that we are believers and not doubters. In Jesus' name, amen.